up guys? So today I'm going to be going over editing this photo at Grinnell Glacier in Glacier National Park, Montana. Uh, I took this I think only about two weeks ago so that puts that at mid-July for this. I don't think this hike is open more than maybe two to three months a year because of conditions and it's very high in elevation. It's kind of up north in Montana so there's snow most of the year. But I wanted to edit this photo from start to finish and I'm going to be doing this for a lot of photos so you guys can just see what goes into the photos I edit. You can get more so a taste of my style, how I do things, little tricks that I use, and just kind of everything along the way. So this photo in particular I wanted to edit and I was really happy with it when I was shooting it because obviously the water is this crazy aqua bloom and the sun wasn't even shining on it this day because it was, it was extremely overcast and cloudy but just super blue water and somehow for whatever reason there's like these two little like red pools most likely there's some sort of clay or rock or mil minerals and then water that's just stuck here is because of that turns red I don't know what it was but I saw it and I, I was kind of just mind blown and I haven't edited this yet but I have a feeling it's gonna be quite a uh, kinda intense edit so Rather than just showing everyone the final image, I would I really wanted to kind of just dive right into it. And what's even more interesting is over here and out of frame, there was so many people. This was like a 13, 14 mile hike and hundreds of people. And I couldn't believe how many people were on such a hike. And we had woken up at like 3 a.m. to do this hike. And still, by the time we went down, there's so many people. And 90% of all of these people didn't even take 50 steps over. And I was one of like one of three people that noticed this, and I'm so happy I did. But anyways, let's dive right in. So first and foremost, I'm going to remove chromatic aberrations and enable profile corrections, and it automatically knows the lens that I was using. I was doing my 1635, and here are my settings, ISO 100 at 16 millimeters f4.0, and shutter speed of 1 over 100. Interestingly enough, I was actually shooting this with my tripod fully extended like six feet and I was holding my tripod above my head by the very tail bottom of the tripod because I was pretty level with this right here. It's a little bit taller than it looks and when I was like that, a lot of this water wasn't coming through just because of the angle I was looking at it. So I put my camera on a 10 second timer and I held a six foot tripod as high as I possibly could and I looked probably like a madman but I'm so happy I did it because I'm way more stoked on this composition and it really shows a good amount of the blue water, the glaciers, and the red pool. So now that I have the lens corrections fixed, I'm just gonna dive in relatively quick with a base edit. If you've been on my channel before, you kind of have a feel for what this is. It only really oops, differs based on whatever the lighting of the photo is, but it's not that much. I'm gonna drop the exposure in the sky, make sure it has some clarity. Oops, I meant to do highlights. And I don't want any change in clarity right there. Now that I have that, I'm gonna up the vibrance. It's a good amount. It's a little bit too yellow, so maybe drop the white balance. And maybe just bring that up just a touch. Maybe drop that a little bit more. I think that looks better already. And now I'm going to come down here to the HSL tab. I want those aquas to really be pungent aqua. And with that, I'll even drop the blues just a touch. And then I'm going to crank the aquas because I really want this water to just kind of like be in your face. Because uh, when I was there, that was kind of the emotion that came through. So I wanted to show in the photo. Bring up the blue saturation a little bit. And I really want it to be relatively bright, so I'm gonna crank the luminance as well. I think that looks great. And this is interesting actually, because there's a bit of green coming in. I'm not sure if that is a mixture of the water and the reflection right here, but I kinda dig it. And for the red, I want it to be really bright, and not in a morbid way, but I kinda want it to be like a blood red, just because I think it would be really interesting and dynamic to the photo. So I'm gonna crank that up and even the saturation. I'm just gonna see what the hue does because I'm just 
curious how crazy it would look. I don't want orange, I don't want pink. I'm just gonna leave that at zero because it looks pretty good where it is. And I'm actually gonna put in another graduated filter right here to cut that. It's a little bright and kind of takes away from the more important parts of the photo. Set that to zero and just drop the exposure all in all. Extend that a little bit more, maybe too much. But even just there, that helps plenty. And now I'm just gonna show you a quick before and after. It's before, it's after, it's already looking really good. And now I'm just gonna do control click, edit in Adobe Photoshop, just so I can do a few more selective edits, a little bit of cleanup, because so it'll look better in Photoshop. All right, now that this is loaded in Photoshop, I'm gonna make a copy of my background layer, which is Command J or you can just drag this over the new layer icon. But now on this fresh layer, I'm gonna come up to Camera Raw Filter. This is something I do a lot. It's almost the same as Lightroom, but you can be really selective, and I like it a lot more than the graduated or radial filters in Lightroom, just because you can manually select what you want to change. Um, I want a little bit more color in these mountains, but I know if I crank the oranges or yellows, it's really gonna affect this. That's why I waited till Photoshop for this. I also want, that's a little too yellow, I maybe like towards the reds just a touch. And I want some dehaze because I want those to be pretty punchy. And as I'm doing this and making these edits, although it's affecting the whole photo, I'm only looking where I want it, which is right here. I'm gonna click OK. And to put this only where I want it, I'm gonna do a layer mask, invert it, which is Command I, and that takes away the edit on the entire photo. And now, because it's inverted, I can take a white brush, paint on black, and what that will do is paint in what I want to show up with the edit we just did in Camera Raw. So get my settings 100%, normal blend mode, and pretty roughly, I'm just going to brush this in. Um, for stuff like this, I've got my feather on, I've got a very soft edge brush, so I'm not too concerned about this seeping over. That alone helps, so I'll show you the before and after. Maybe it's too much, so I'll drop the opacity just a touch. And then I'm gonna make a merge visible layer, which I say this in all my videos, but it's Command Option Shift E on a Mac, and that just makes a fresh layer with all previous edits below into a fresh new layer. And now I'm gonna bring my spot healing brush tool, which is right here, or you can just click J. And I wanna make sure these people get out of here. And I'm gonna make this tool bigger with the bracket keys. So it's a nice little shortcut for that. And Photoshop does a really, really good job of this. So see how it goes in case we need to clean up like right there. But I mean, as you can see, Photoshop knows what's up. Every update they do, this tool gets better. And sometimes you just need to take a few passes I'm going to take a clone stamp tool now. I'm just going to do option click. I'm going to just drag this down. And now make another merge visible. And I'm going to come back into the spot healing brush tool and just clean up these duplicates right here. And this will make it so no one will know that we did anything unless they saw me do this. So this is just general photo cleanup. out some of these because those are duplicates and you don't want that to be seen and realistically no one would notice this unless they analyzed a very large print of this photo for a very long time 
but still. <clears throat> I think that looks pretty solid. I am going to bring a new blank layer and I'm just gonna brush with like this color. Actually no, I need a deeper blue like right there. And I'm gonna grab my brush tool with like a 18% opacity and the reason I'm doing this is Photoshop actually did not do as good of a job as normal on that so I'm just gonna kind of blending in color to kind of go over any weird marks or anything and just kind of soften the area Now let's zoom out, see a before and after. Yeah, that looks worlds are better. And now merge visible. And I'm gonna hide all of these layers so you can see the before and after. People are out, mountains look good. Stoked on that. Now I'm gonna make actually a dodge layer so I can really amp up this red. So I'm gonna do option, new layer. And then I'm gonna change my blend mode to soft light and if you want me to go more in depth on dodge and burning i have a full probably like 30 to 50 minute course on my youtube it's i believe chapter six just dodging and burning and then advanced dodging and burning i go a lot deeper into this so i'm because of that i'm going to go a little bit quicker through this part get my nice bright red it's a little too saturated so i'm going to bring it over and i want it to be a little bit brighter so i'm going to put that there I'm going to do a 100% brush and then I'm just going to lower my opacity after the fact. Again, I have a soft edge brush so I'm not really concerned on uh, having an exact selection for this. Just don't find it necessary. I know pretty much when it looks something looks good or doesn't in my photos. So if it doesn't look good, I'll obviously we'll go back, but and now I'm gonna take like a 35% brush and just blend in these areas. Well, too little, fifty. That looks pretty dope. Drop the opacity, seventy-five. I think that looks awesome. And I'm gonna make one more merge visible. Command Option Shift E. I think that is it for this one, guys.